great to be here. Thank you very much for the opportunity to share some of the work that we've been uh, involving ourselves in at the Durham District School Board. And so just starting from the beginning of where our process really took us, we really wanted to look at how can we continue to become more aware of what some of the Ministry of Education's policies and practices would be and how can we align the policies within the Equity, Diversity and Race Relations Department so that they're supportive of students, staff, parents and community within our region. So just some of the key points that we wanted to make sure we're aligned with would be the core priorities of the ministry, looking at the way that we continue to have high standards and high expectations for students, but high, high levels of outcome in terms of how we can reinforce the support systems for students. We also wanted to look at the ways that we can reduce some of the gaps to student engagement, but not only student engagement, what can we do to reinforce some of the engagement possibilities for parents, guardians, community members at large. We definitely continue to work towards areas where we can create more public confidence in what is happening inside the system of public education and the way that we communicate with people is one of our core prior, uh, priorities within the department. So just connecting with one of the pieces that Martin mentioned earlier this morning around partnership, we really wanted to look at how we can intentionally create more of a strategic area in terms of looking at the areas where we want to connect with parents and families and students, really looking at what are some of the experiences that people are having within buildings, within environmental um, educational spaces, and also the way that we can continue to open areas for engagement in the future. So some of those key pieces come under what we would term supporting more inclusive spaces, and that we don't want to ever assume that we are there. We want to look at the fact that we're all on a continuum of creating more of an environment where students feel safer and more included, where parents and community members also experience those same key factors in engagement and successful education. Some of the ways that we've connected to uh, the, the way that we can make sure that we're creating that environment of safety and a more inclusive space is that we wanted to reinforce collective movement towards those ideals and also reinforcing what people think of when they think of safety or inclusive environments. So the key pieces that would also align with Ontario's equity and inclusive education strategy would be around honoring and becoming more aware of what we term diversity. So we want to continually expand on the notion of diversity and not just kind of stopping with what is familiar and comfortable, but moving towards a full understanding of all of the human diverse qualities that make up all of the people that we interact with on a daily basis. We also wanted to look at equity. What does that really mean when we say we're supporting fair treatment for students, <clears throat> for educators, staff, parents, and community, and how can we further reinforce that through our daily practice? And finally, one of the key pieces was around inclusive education. So one of the key pieces for inclusive education in our department, we decided that we really wanted to reinforce and support notions around inclusive language. And the fact that the language that we're using can reinforce <clears throat> acceptance or inclusion for students, for staff, for all prime people who are in the building, but we can also use those key pieces in a strategic way to make sure that the people that are coming out of the building are also reinforcing these connections within the community. Again, just re referencing back to Ontario's equity and inclusive education strategy, we wanted to look at the way that we share our leadership that we're not just going to keep the leadership and the understanding of the strategy at the board level, but we wanted to make necessary connections and to also share in an open way the reasons why we need to look at issues and ideas and notions such as equity, diversity, and inclusive education. And we wanted to make sure that this is something that is transparent, not only for staff, for students, for parents, and the community. Some of the key pieces that also reinforce our work within the board would be Durham directions and looking at the way that we implement equitable practices and policies at all levels. So as a department we felt that it was important to continue this implementation in all of the pieces that would also create the standards and expectations not only for our interactions but also for the way that we can use curriculum either hidden what is an implied curriculum within schools and buildings but also what is explicitly stated within curriculum to really reinforce that safer more inclusive space. And some of the key areas within Durham Directions, and this is a piece that Martin also alluded to earlier, and now it's exciting to see how it's going to expand into the community partnership realm. But some of the key pieces in the past have been and continue to be striving to provide more equitable services, looking at the way anti-oppression, anti-racism, and equity education actually comes to life within the classroom, and also looking at the way that we can encourage cooperation, acceptance, and respect from all areas within educational systems. 
We also want to know that we're supporting what we hope will be a supportive and quality education through system-wide practices, but not just what we think that will be, en engaging educators and also students in the conversation so that we're doing what's relevant for student needs and that we're reinforcing high expectations and connections for the future. So just making some connections now as to why we thought we would do this at the equity diversity and race relations department level, we looked at the fact that the Ontario Equity and Inclusive Education Strategy had four a four-year action plan from 2009 to 2012. And one of the key areas where we thought we could make a difference was looking at where we could look at some action plans that would support the diverse needs of people within the buildings. Also, we wanted to look to further expand on, again, the terminology around diversity, that we want to really make connections to social realities in terms of who is actually in the building and I've listed a few of the key pieces, but really looking at how do those things come to life in intersectionality and in the layering of identity throughout our daily practice. Just a quick overview of our working group. We looked towards who are the people within the departments at the school board level who are also having direct interaction and hopefully impact in a great way within the school system. So the key departments that were involved in this piece were the Equity, Diversity, and Race Relations Departments, also Aboriginal Education, and Special Education. So one of the key pieces that came up through this collaboration was that we wanted to involve ourselves in a reflective practice, not just kind of put together a group, but think about what was a strategic goal and what was the purpose of coming together as a group. Some of the key pieces that we found would be that we'd often get calls from schools or we might have calls from the community. And a lot of key pieces did link back to the notion that language was something that is creating more of a poison environment. So we know that language can either uplift and bring people closer to the center and make them feel that they are more included, or language can create more of a distance, lack of relationship, and kind of cut people off from some of their potential possibilities in the future. This is just a quote from the Guidelines for Inclusive Language, but there are also some samples at the side in case you'd like to take a closer look. But I felt it aptly wrapped up some of the pieces we thought of when we were looking at the development of the strategy. So just the fact that language does reflect our, our experiences, but we also wanted to know that it is a powerful tool that we can use to start to interrupt some of the barriers, some of the language that's coming up, some of the existence of maybe feeling left out, pushed out, and marginalized, but building bridges towards feeling included and pulled closer to the center in terms of education, in terms of relationships within the building, and hopefully making connections with the community. Some of our critical dialogue led us to looking at what do we need to do in terms of moving ourselves forward, in terms of supporting social realities. So one of the key pieces we felt was interesting to engage in critical dialogue about was becoming more critically and culturally proficient. Um, this is also something we go back and forth about and also argue because we can never be culturally proficient because diversity in the face of social realities always changes. So we want to know that we are moving towards becoming more culturally responsive, more culturally competent. So if you'll see, um, we've basically designed it more as a swirl and a continuum. It was a source of some contention from some people in the public, so it's probably a question that will come up later. But I think that often if we're not really sure how something is intended to be used, we can be curious as to why it is actually being created. So one thing we wanted to do is look towards the fact that we need to look at what we're comfortable with, where we're more competent, but also look at the areas where we're not comfortable. Where do we need to invest more time in knowing more about human qualities so that we can better support the client, the student, the parents, the community coming into the building? So we also wanted to reinforce through the document that person-first language is one of those key pieces in terms of interrupting what we feel could be a barrier to feeling included within spaces, and also look at the fact that the main goal of the document was to create more verbally and non-verbally respectful language. <coughs> And again, reinforcing that we would recognize all differences so that there are several dimensions that are mentioned and it's also not an exclusive list. So we wanted to reinforce that through a lot of the pieces that we had and also through communication and consultation within the board or conversations with stakeholders. We wanted to reinforce that this is not an exhaustive list, but it is a sampling of the way that we can start as an entry point into becoming more inclusive. Some of the key ways that the document was shared within the board would be through professional development sessions for teachers, uh, book clubs, also used with 
staff meetings just to make sure that there is more of an awareness about the impact that language can have in more of an explicit sense, what is stated, and in more of a hidden sense, and what is implied through curriculum or through messaging within schools. So really just raising the bar of accountability and also transparency within schools. So thank you very much.